Hello everyone, welcome back. Now today I'm gonna work on a setup on a new sensor that is MXC6226XU. To have a knowledge about this sensor and to see it, let's have a look over the website controleverything.com and here search for the relevant sensor that is MXC6226XU. Now as you can see, this sensor is a digital thermal orientation accelerometer. It's a four position orientation detection and shock survival greater than 50,000 G fully integrated thermal accelerometer and a lot more features are being provided as you can see. Now you can purchase the sensor from the website and here it is. Today I will be interfacing this sensor MXC6226XU with the Raspberry Pi and a Python code and to download the Python code go to the source tab and here comes the Python code sample. Now you can download the code sample as a zip file from this very site as you can see from this link. You can also download the code from github repository and it's called control everything community. Now let's have a look over the hardware connections we need to show the working and the interfacing of this sensor. Now this is the sensor we are looking forward to explore that is MXC6226XU. It's a digital thermal accelerometer. Now we want to connect it with a Raspberry Pi which is here as you can see. Now I want to make a connection among the sensor and the Raspberry Pi and for that I require an I2C shield which is available on the website controleverything.com. The reason why we are using this I2C shield is to make connections with other I2C devices and rather make them easy. So gently place the I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi. And for making a connection among the sensor and the I2C shield, this here, a connecting cable comes into the picture and now gently connect over to the sensor. And while making this connection, make sure that the ground terminal of the sensor should be connected to the ground wire of the cable. And hence, we are, have to be sure for I2C shield also for the same. Now, we want to make the power up connection for the Raspberry Pi and here comes a micro USB cable and gently insert it over the power jack and light it up. So finally we need to make an internet connection for the Raspberry Pi and for that we require an ethernet cable we, which you are able to see on my screen and gently insert it over the power jack. Now in case if you don't have this you can also use a wireless nano adapter. It's very useful and it can might save you day also. Now what do we require is a code so that we can interface this with the sensor in the Raspberry Pi and let's see what we got there. Now to look out for the sensor for the python and uh, for that uh, log in to github.com and here search for the repository that is control everything community which is the official repository for control everything.com and here we go here type in the sensor name so that we can search it better and here we are as you can see it's mxc6226xu now this is the python code uh, we would like to see and let's have a look over the instructions first uh, we have to download and install SMS library on the Raspberry Pi and here comes the send, uh, link for the installation let's have a better view for this as you can see example dependencies installation commands are here all information is there you can refer it now this is the command to run the python code for the sensor I'll get back to it and here we go with the sensor as you can see it's a .py extension file now in the code, first of all, we have imported SMS and time libraries and we have the address of the sensor that is 0x16. Uh, for the writing part, we have selection of the detection register that is 0x04 and we have power up command that says 0x00. The writing command is here as you can see. Now in the reading part, we have read data back from 0x002 bytes for x, y axis and the command is here. Now after that we have the conversion of the data takes place which is according to the formalities we have fulfilled for the data sheet. Now at the very end we have the output data to be displayed on the screen which is in the form of acceleration for y and x axis. Now it's perfectly formatted in percentage %d format and uh, the raw values are being displayed. Now what do we require is to show the practical of this code along with the sensor. Let's have it. Now comes the interesting part which is to show the practicality of this code so for that copy this entire python code 
and open the terminal for the Raspberry Pi through the internet as you can see. Now here create a new file mxc6226xu for the reference and .py as the extension file for the python. Now paste the code and save it. Now this is the command to run the code as you can see on my screen and here we go. It says that acceleration in x and y axis. Now again it says that the constant values are there which means there is no motion for the sensor. Now when I try to move the sensor in the directions, all directions, you will see the change in acceleration and y axis uh, for x and y axis acceleration uh, and it's changing constantly according to the movement of the sensor as I move it. So this is how the code works. Now what do we require is to see the benefits and the applications for this sensor. Now let's have a look over that also. The sensor MXC. 6226XU is a MEMSIC digital thermal orientation sensor. DITOS is the world's first fully integrated orientation sensor. Its operational is based on the patented MEMS thermal technology and is built using a standard 0.18 micrometer CMOS process. DITOS contains no moving parts such as a ball and thus eliminates field reliability and repetitivity issues associated with competitive products. It also eliminates the click sound typically heard in all ball based orientation sensors. Shock survival is greater than 50,000 G. So due to these uh, features it's applicable like applications which are cell phones, digital still cameras, digital video cameras, LCD TVs, toys, MP3s, MP4s, fan heaters, cooling fans and a lot more. Now you can purchase this sensor and it's available on the website controleverything.com as you can see and you can get the code from the resource tab. After that you can download it. You can also download the code from github repository and the web it's called control everything community. Now for relevant questions and any frequent queries you can contact us on controleverything.com and you can post your queries on the community page. To have blogs, articles which are relevant to this video you can go to instructables.com and search us for this. Now if you want more videos like this you can subscribe our YouTube channel. At the very end I would like to make it clear that for any queries you can contact us on controleverything.com and you can fully understand any part of this video or sensor. Now I hope you have a good day and you enjoyed this video and a lot thanks for watching.